Hey, how y'all doing? It's uh, Pastors Kelly and Dolly. Good to be with you again. Uh, we're still talking about the Word of God. Powerful subject. Yes, I, I can. I think we could talk about it for eternity. We could. We could. We could make a series out of this for sure. But glad you joined us today. We want to take a little time. We're going to continue talking about this Word. Mm -hmm. You know, of all. You know, everybody that has a job in the real world usually has some kind of tools. You know, doctors have certain tools, electricians, plumbers, whatever it is, you have tools. As children of God, this is our toolbox. Most important. This is our uh, contract. Mm -hmm. It's the receipt. It's the, uh, the bill of goods for all the promises we have. I mean, right. it, it wraps up in everything. And I know, you know, when sometimes when you try to read it, I didn't understand it at first. <clears throat> when I first, when I, even when I was a kid, I would try to read it as a kid. Dad, show it and not a piece. Yeah, just my understanding is just a list of, you know, do's and don'ts. Right. And That's all you can really see in it when well, you Well, yeah, from on the surface, but then it really wasn't until I got the, the Holy Spirit that this thing started coming alive. It revolutionized our life, the and Holy Spirit did. the scriptures that I had read that meant absolutely nothing when I was lost, mm -hmm. all of a sudden came alive. They did. And brought me understanding and knowledge right. and showed me Jesus because really everything in the Old Testament was actually telling us about Jesus yeah and pointing us toward Jesus and that's you know sometimes that's hard to understand it's even you know in Luke 24 Jesus is risen and he's, he's shown himself to some of the disciples and in verse 44 he says he says these are the words which I spake unto you while I was yet with you that all things must be fulfilled which were written in the law of Moses and in the prophets and in the Psalms concerning me. Yeah. It's basically saying everything in the law and the prophets and the Psalms was talking about me. And he wasn't being high-minded or proud. He was just yeah. trying to get him to understand. And the two guys that he was walking with in verse 45, it says, Then opened he their understanding that they might understand the scriptures. There, I mean, it is something. When when this book opens up to you, <clears throat> woo, you just got a new toy. I mean, it's yeah. like it's like it's something. It's powering. At Christmas morning, you you can't get enough of it. Right. But then it goes from Luke right into John, and John chapter one verse one says, "In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. Yeah. All things were made by Him." which we just saw as the word. So really all things were made by the word. Without the word was not anything made that was made. That's right. That's in the word was did. life and the life was the light of men. Yes. God said and it became. Mm -hmm. And he's given us this word as a record that we can look back in the law, the prophets, the Psalms, and everything in the Old Testament and see how God was pointing them toward Jesus. That's right. And now Jesus has come. Yeah. And we take this and we go, we, we go through the cross, we find salvation, and we become God's kids. Yes. And, and just learn more and more about what that means. You know, something that you just said about him opening up your understanding, over in Hebrews um, chapter 10, it says in verse um, 32, well, 31, says, it's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. Mm -hmm. Makes you sound like, oh no. But then it says, But call to remembrance the former days in which after you were illuminated, you endured a great fight of affliction, partly while you were made a gazing stock both by reproaches and afflictions, and partly while you became companion of them that were so used. So what this is saying, um, I'll break it down for you. I heard this sermon years and years and years ago that just explained this to me. What he was just saying about your understanding being enlightened. When you are hearing somebody who's anointed and the, the Spirit of God is breathing on the Word, or when you're reading the Bible and the Spirit of the Lord breathes on it, and all of a sudden you see something, you are, you well, the, hey, look what this says. I mean, it'll be, it'll be a life-changing moment for you. At that moment, that's called being illuminated. That, 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 word, that scripture came, became real. Yes, it became alive right then. Yeah. That word illuminated, if you look it up in his concordance that he's always talking about, was like um, the shutter on, it's photismo. And it comes, it's the word that means like in the old cameras that we used to have, what would happen is the shutter would open, the light would expose the film, and then the shutter would close again. 
And so what happens when you're reading the Bible and the Spirit of the Lord is breathing upon it, I always, like, Lord, reveal this to me. When, when all of a sudden that aha moment happens to you, what has happened is you just got illuminated. Um, the image was seared on your heart. All of a sudden, you know something now you did not know before. There's a new image on the inside of you. And so what's going to happen is it's going to go on here, and while you're being... You're, being, you're learning how to walk this thing out and how to get along with all the other Christians and stuff. That film is being developed. You know, whenever they used to take pictures, they would take the film out of the camera and then they would go into a dark room and they would put it in this chemical and then they would hang it up. And it seemed like a series of things that probably weren't real comfortable. Maybe, you know, they didn't really, uh, the film probably didn't like the process. But at the end of the process, when they came out of the room with a photo, it was the exact image that had been put on your heart during that process. So if God says he loves you and that and it closes back, all of a sudden you're like, oh, God loves me. Okay, well then there's going to probably be a process where the enemy's going to come and try to distract the heck out of you and get you off that because that is so powerful. You are about to change the world with that little revelation. You're about to change every relationship you have with every person you know because now you understand that you're loved. So now all bets are off. Everybody's going to change now. So the enemy's going to come and try to steal that word. You're going to go through the process of that word becoming alive and developing in you and all of a sudden producing fruit. It's going to be a little season. We're, we're pretty much an instant society, but it's going to be a short season. And all of a sudden, somebody that's hateful or something's going to come up to you. I remember one night I was being attacked by a gang and we were, they were beating me up and all kind of stuff. And the whole time I was preaching at them saying, you know, God loves you. Um, you know, he's, he forgives you. I, I just kept preaching at them. And it was supernatural because at the end of the thing, I'm sitting there going, wow, I was just, I really cared about the people that were doing me wrong. It was supernatural. It wasn't me. And that's because this word of God had had time to develop in my life. And I was walking in a supernatural level of something that you cannot fake on your I can I can act yeah. like I love you all day long until you make me mad. Well that you know, the example she used, you know, God God gives you an illumination that he loves you. Well at that point, when you start reading these scriptures, you see God's love in every scripture. Every scripture's gonna be you're, talking you're, about his love. These scriptures start kind of funneling through that picture that that he's given you yes. and you see God's love in John 3:16 you see God's love when he you know when he when he corrects us people one of God's most you know even as fathers we correct our children he gave us laws to keep us safe yeah don't not play to in punish the freeway. us God God's not in the punishment business he's in the giving and the love business yes but when you get a revelation like that, we talked about last time, some God gives some folks a financial revelation. Yes. They see finances. Yeah. They're God a gave, that, that's one kingdom. of the things God gave me was a revelation of his love for us. And I mm -hmm. see God's love in every, everywhere, everywhere in this book. Right. You, right. You'll never convince me otherwise that God is anything but a loving yeah. Heavenly Father. Exactly. Because I see that in every scripture. Yeah, because it's been illuminated to you. Right. The Holy talks, Spirit breathed on it. It's almost like where you meet him at. It talks about when Moses met him at the burning bush, and then later on in Moses' life, Moses is still talking about the God he met at the burning bush. Yes. That image was still his his, illumination his picture of God and his yeah. idea, you know, it was it was real to him. Yeah. And it stayed with him his whole life. And that's what you have to have. That's what you need. Yeah. In order to actually be a real Christian, yeah. not just some yeah. theory. Nobody's going to pretend. Theory. We're not here to act. We're not here. Yeah. To, you know, the word hypocrite in the New Testament, Jesus kept calling the religious leaders hypocrites. Hypocrites. We kind of think we don't understand that. But if you look it up in the Greek, it means actors or pretenders. Yeah. This I'm not acting. This is me. We don't have time. This is my pretend. life. This is me. This is who I am. Exactly. Take it or leave it. That's I mean, right. I, you know, we're on a mission. We hope you like us. Yeah. If you don't, go find somebody you do. I'm not. If if you don't I'm like us, to you're ugly. just not called to the same. Well, I'm thing not trying to be to, ugly, but I don't have time to try to pretend and and figure out what you like and be that. I'm just going to be me. Exactly. And God says He loves me just the way He is because He built me this way. Yeah. So you know, it's it's one of those things. This book is the only thing that's going to get you know. God knows why He put you here. And that purpose is in this book. That's right. And through him and he and the Holy Spirit, Jesus Christ, this word, which is the word robed in flesh. Mm -hmm. Picture this Bible in flesh form. There's Jesus. That's it. But that's going to get you to your purpose, to, uh, to know what it is, to figure out how to get to it, and to obtain it, 
and to live the most satisfied life you can live. That's it. And you know, free from free from the control of the enemy or the world system. And I know that you know she said the enemy will come against you as soon as you, every time God illuminates you, he's going to come and say, well, there's something you need to do, something you need to do, or this or that. And just hold on and just wait. God's revealing yeah. something in your life, and you're going to produce that fruit. He sowed a seed. You know, the Bible says that we're the dirt. He took Adam right from the dirt. And the word of God is a seed. The word of God gets sown. Oh. It gets sown. It gets sown. Every time you're hearing it, every time you're in church, every time you're listening to a preacher, every time you're reading the Bible, the word is being sown in your life. And it's going to produce righteousness and yeah. peace and faith and hope. It's going to produce it's going that. It's going to bring your purpose Because to it produces what the seed is. Yeah. You know, we talk a lot about it, but, you know, something that's come up the last couple of sermons at church was, I'm not working to be what God says I am. I'm working to believe what God says I am. That's such a powerful language. Because, you know, real quick, John chapter 19, verse 28, Jesus is hanging on the cross. He's paid every price, every slap, spit, slash, uh, everything he went through was to pay a price for something that we owe. Yeah. And in verse 28, it says, After this, Jesus, knowing that all things were now accomplished, that the scriptures might be fulfilled. Yeah. He said, I thirst, and he gave up the ghost. He said, it's finished. He bowed his head, and he went on. He fulfilled the scriptures. Everything. I need to believe what he did. That's right. For me to get my belief to a place it needs to be, it's going to have to, I, I need this book. That's right. I need to, to get in this book and God says, yeah, you were messed up before, but now. Yeah. How many scriptures? He says, oh, you know, fornicators and blah, 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 you know, this and that and this and that. And such as, such were some of you yeah. before, we was, but sure. now. Right. Right. I love the but nows. Yes, me too. But now Jesus has fulfilled all things and said it's finished. And if I can get in this book, get that in my heart, and start walking that out, this thing is alive. That's it. That's Everything it. that he said comes to pass. It does. And praise God, we got a book. Praise God for King James. I don't know what else he did. He might have been a pretty bad dude, but he did translate the, the, the Bible into English. Well, and there's several scriptures, I mean, several, you know, different There's versions. Translations. I like King James. I do too, and we're used to it, so that makes but, it easier for us. Like I said, you know, we, keep, we, we said in the last video, it, it's not all heavy. It can be light. It can be fun. It can, you know, it's It's, it's exciting. exactly what you're looking for. It, it really is. is. You'll find whatever you're looking for, but I like, I like studying the Word of God. Yeah. It's just life-changing. And, you know, if, if you've never um, read the Bible before, I just suggest that you just start in the book of John in yeah. the New Testament. And that's, that's one of the Gospels. It'll kind of tell you the story according to John. And then if you'll just stay in the New Testament, then I wouldn't go into Revelations just quite yet because that's pretty deep understanding. But if you'll just stay right in there, you will start learning the covenant that you're in and the character of God, the character of Jesus. You'll see him for who he is. And it will it will help you when you then start going and, and looking in the Old Testament. You don't you can read this Bible from front from to the back. end. Go do that if you want to. But I suggest if you're gonna study it. That that's not how you study it. You you want to spend all your time in the old covenant because God's got you in the new the right. new covenant. I don't read it as a chore. I read it because I enjoy it. Because it's God talking to yeah. you, and I love to listen I love to God spend talk. Time with him. Mm -hmm. Praise God. If you if you're not sure that you're saved, it's very simple. Just say, Jesus, I ask you to save me. I ask you to forgive me, and and explain this to me, Jesus. Jesus will explain this to you Himself. And um, I want to encourage you if you if you're liking our videos at all, if if anything we're saying or doing is helping you, let us know. Or if you have any questions that maybe we could address, we would love to do that. And if if something's ministered to you and it's helpful to you, share this um, yeah. this link. Or whatever. Do you think Just somebody you know might uh, might get something? Share it. Tag them in it. Let yeah. us know. Yeah. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Good seeing you. Good talking to you. And we'll catch you on the next one.